Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Were the Byzantines actually Romans? No. Video over. No, let's do it. Um, preemptive like. Original link to the video, top of the description, right below that, link to the Discord, blah, blah, blah. Fire of Learning, great channel. Let's do it. I'm Justin. The Byzantines, or more properly, the Eastern Romans, or more properly, just the Romans. But were they really? I mentioned in my documentary that I thought that the term Byzantine was acceptable as long as it was understood that it was synonymous with Eastern Roman, and therefore not being used to de-Romify the Empire. This is a common position to take, but not universal. If the Byzantines were Romans, why is there discussion and debate over the issue at all? Where does the term Byzantium even come from? What important differences are there between- Right, why, why not- yeah. Well, they didn't consider themselves Eastern Roman. Like, did they see themselves as Romans? Like, before the collapse and after the collapse, they were Romans the whole time? And if so, why are people putting these labels? Between the two. Well, in this video, we'll answer all these questions and more, so let's get to it. Okay. Before we begin, I would like to thank Julian Condros and Academy of Idiot for being our most recent supporters on Patreon. They join these supporters who make these videos possible. So this debate over the identity of these people naturally reached the comment sections of my recent Byzantine videos. Is this really the Roman Empire or a kind of Greek successor state? Something in between, maybe. Both sides have made good arguments. For me, though, there are three questions that have to be addressed to answer this main question. First, where did the name Byzantium come from? The Byzantines never called themselves Byzantines. They were almost always the Romans, though they did at times, specifically in the later years of the empire, emphasize their Greekness. Likewise, many of their neighbors recognized them as Romans, though not all of them. Some peoples did call them the Greeks, such as the Holy Roman Empire, which did this intentionally. In 800 AD, the Frankish king Charlemagne was crowned Holy Roman Emperor. In the West, many Westerners viewed Frankish king Charlemagne Holy Roman Empire, which did this intentionally. In 800 AD, the Frankish king Charlemagne was crowned Holy Roman Emperor. In the West, many Westerners viewed this as stripping the title of Rome from the East, and so they were not uncommonly referred to as the Kingdom of the Greeks. The name Byzantium, or Byzantion, comes from the name of Constantinople before Constantine I renamed it. It was likely first used in the 16th century, a century after the empire had fallen, partially to try to separate this medieval Hellenic Rome from the classical Latin Rome with which most Western Europeans identified, and of which, in the case of the Holy Roman Empire, they viewed themselves as the true successors. In summary, Byzantium is an exonym and a historical name, not a name that was in use at the time, though not everyone agreed that they were the Roman Empire. Second question. If we do differentiate Rome and Byzantium, where does one draw the line and for what reason? So that's a big thing for me, that they, they called themselves Romans and, and weren't... <laughs> differentiate Rome and Byzantium, where does one draw the line and for what reason? The obvious answer at first seems to be 476 AD. This is the year that the Western Roman Empire fell and the East would be, for the most part, now left on its own. The problem with this is that the fall of Western Rome didn't actually change a whole lot for Eastern Rome immediately. Life in 477 was not a whole lot different for the people of the East than in 475. The Eastern Romans had been acting independently of the West for quite a while at this point. If you were to ask them who they were in the years following the fall of Western Rome, they would have told you that they were the Romans, without a second thought. In fact, though I mentioned they gradually came to emphasize their Greekness, the people of the region identified as Romans right up until the 20th century. The perspective that they were the actual Romans had not changed, and it wouldn't really ever change as much as one might think. Point being, their Romanness was not dependent on the existence of Western Rome. 
Frankly, very few people really seem to have even believed that the Western Roman Empire had fallen for good, and it would be some time before even that belief was lost. The general consensus of the age, and for a few centuries after in the East, was that the West was just experiencing technical difficulties, and eventually, the old order would be restored when the Easterners marched over and turned the old empire off and on again a couple times. <laughs> Alright, but couldn't we argue that even if the people of the time weren't really aware of it, 476 was the beginning of a series of changes that separated the East from its Roman past? In a sense, yes, I don't deny that there's some truth to that. However, 476 was not quite the year that the East and West were really split. A very important thing to keep in mind with this question is that we can really see the beginnings of what we call Byzantium over a hundred years before the Roman Empire fell. It was Diocletian who, in the third century, divided- I want to know, like, when is the last, like, when, how long ago was it that Everything was undoubtedly under Rome, and it was all the Roman Empire. Like, when was the last, like, was it after, uh, Commodus or something? Divided the empire into four, which later quickly evolved into the practice of dividing it into the two halves, east and west. One empire, but under different, more local administrations. It was in the early 4th century that Constantine the Great decided to found his great city. New Rome, Constantinople, on top of the aforementioned former Greek city, Byzantium, as the Christian capital of the East, and his capital from which the empire was to be ruled. I've never really heard a historian refer to Zeno the Isaurian, who was Eastern Emperor in 476, as the first Byzantine Emperor. That title generally is given to Constantine the Great, who was a clear Roman and Emperor over all of Rome. Not only do we see what we would call Byzantium clearly existing in Rome, but the opposite is also true. It would be difficult to argue that Justinian the Great, who reigned from 527 to 565, was not a Roman. He was a Latin-speaking Illyrian born only six years after the fall of the West who worked tirelessly toward the goal of restoring the empire in the West and was about halfway successful. His generals, including Belisarius. the famous Belisarius, reclaimed North Africa, part of Spain, the Mediterranean islands, and of course, the Roman heartland of Italy, and with it, the all-important city of Rome itself. But was the city of Rome really all that important, though? One point often mentioned is that the Byzantines spent most of their time without the city of Rome in their hands, but Rome was not even the capital of the late Western Roman Empire. As the centuries progressed, Ravenna the empire became less about Rome and Italy specifically, and more about the empire as a whole. Anyway, if we look at the map of Justinian's empire, it looks like a Rome, it sounds like a Rome, the people alive were genuine Romans, and the children of genuine Romans. They weren't LARPing like later civilizations would. Again, I don't mind the term Byzantium, but it would be difficult to argue that Justinian's empire was not a Roman one. Alright, so... Maybe just argue that Justinian's empire was not a Roman one. All right, so maybe Justinian was a true, genuine Roman emperor. However, he is sometimes regarded as the last of the Roman emperors, and we can see why. After him, we start to see the East. I want to know the last year or decade, okay, if you can't pin it to a year. A year is too short of a time, I, I, I guess, for any solid change. So decade, where there was no question, this is Rome, right? So there's no doubt that under um, Augustus or Nero or Caligula or whatever, like that was Rome. All of it was Rome. When was it that the question of is it Rome first appeared? It's to slowly attach itself. Where like everyone agrees, like, yeah, this decade is Roman. All of it is a Roman Empire. Or everyone agrees that to the point where some disagree. I, I want to know when that was. ...from its Roman origins and start to see it becoming more... We start to see the East slowly detach itself from its Roman origins and start to see it becoming more Greek or a more Hellenic civilization. It's at this point where I am a bit more sympathetic to the idea that the Byzantine Empire was a Greek empire. After Justinian, the Byzantines started moving towards speaking Greek. Now, as we discussed in my video about why the Byzantines spoke Greek, the Eastern Romans pretty much always had 
Greek was always a major language of the Roman Empire and was common throughout the Mediterranean world even before the Romans arrived. Most Western Roman aristocrats even spoke Greek as a second language. But after 565, almost everyone in the East stopped bothering with Latin altogether, even emperors. Greek culture became dominant. The Western lands, including much of Italy, and as I mentioned, Rome itself, were soon lost. The empire encompassed lands that were a part of the Hellenic world before the Romans came by, almost completely lands that were remnants of Alexander's empire. So there was an underlying Greek identity in the, uh, what is now modern day Greece area that was always there it must have if, if eventually it revived if eventually greek culture and language was revived over latin then there had to have been a strong greek identity all the way through the roman empire in that area right empire. but eventually after the muslim conquests and centuries after of territory loss mostly just anatolia and greece itself which were the true heart of greek Bulgarian Empire. Civilization. I've never heard of that. I have never heard of that. I would like to learn about that. To begin with. With this in mind, we may not only wonder why historians bother calling this the Roman Empire, but we have to wonder why the Byzantines still called themselves Romans. Ro with this in mind, we may not only wonder why historians bother calling this the Roman Empire, but we have to wonder why the Byzantines still called themselves Romans. And not only this, but why they emphasized it so much and why they even argued over ownership of the term with others, such as the Holy Roman Empire. This brings us to our third question. What is meant by Roman? Looking back at a... Is this a sort of ridiculous... I'm starting to think this might be just a ridiculous historic, like his, like inter-historian conflict that almost might be stupid to even argue about, because not stupid, um, pointless. Or yeah, is this a futile discussion? Is this a pointless argument in that anyone, like the Roman Empire, is? I would argue the largest, most significant empire ever, I would think, right? Guys, I'm no expert. I'm, I'm learning like you. So if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'm not sorry. Or right, just... Let's hear what he has to say. You know what I mean? Like, uh, is this just us quarreling amongst ourselves about something that is much more simple than we make it out to be? Ancient Rome. As the centuries progressed, the Roman Empire became less about an empire, an empire of the ethnic Latin people specifically, but rather came to view itself more like the one true empire of the earth. The true order of the world and the view of late Rome was that there was supposed to be one god, one empire, and one emperor, and all deviations of this were just temporary setbacks. I would not at all say that ethnicity was irrelevant to the people of the age, but Rome was a multi-ethnic empire, in a sense. It had to be. It was the empire that was destined to rule over the entire world, all the world's peoples, after all. The Greeks eventually came to view themselves more as the sole inheritors of Romanness, but it was not simply an empire of Greeks, but also the peoples of other various lands they had conquered. There were even many non-Greek Byzantine emperors as well, many Armenians, for example. So no, the Byzantines weren't Roman in an ethnic sense. Much of the claim originates from the idea that they directly inherited and maintained the Roman Empire, aka the true civilization. It was much more of a political term than a national term. And indeed, with the exception of the fall of Constantinople in 1204, the Eastern Empire remained largely unbroken from Constantine to Constantine. There wasn't really a single point where they lost their claim to Romanness. Though things did change from within, the eastern half of the Roman Empire just kept going. It wasn't like there was a period of trying to revive an ancient empire, it was really just a continuation of that empire. The core ethnic group of the Byzantine Empire, especially after Justinian, the core culture, the core language, etc., was Greek, and they were aware of that. But these Greeks viewed themselves, as I said, as the inheritors of Roman civilization, and I think that that claim to be the inheritors of Roman civilization, and indeed the continuation of it, is pretty respectable. 
Furthermore, another important note is that the term Hellene. That's a problem for me because. So a leader just believing that they are the. Or even the people, even if all of them believe they are the successors to Rome, to Rome, are they the successors of Rome? Like. Or if a leader says, you know, they're the successor of Rome, that means we just have to say, yep, they're the successor of Rome. Like, isn't that for us to kind of, or people to... It is pretty respectable. Furthermore, another important note is that the term Hellene to many ethnic Greeks brought up imagery of a pagan past, and their place as modernized Christians was kind of emphasized by being Romans and referring to themselves as such. They were the descendants of Constantine, the great first Christian emperor, and the inhabitants of the great Christian city of the East itself. Although, in the final centuries, when the empire was restricted to really just the Greek lands themselves, the term Hellene did make a revival, and many Byzantines kind of viewed themselves as both Greeks and Romans. So hopefully this answers the question and helps break it down. I of course welcome you to offer your own viewpoints in the comments section below. I hope you enjoy- If anything, it makes me think like nobody really knows what they're talking about. Not, not that. Ah. Uh... I don't know. I don't know. And I'm very cautious to give, you know, an assertive opinion when I don't know enough. But to me, the end of the Roman Empire was as soon as, 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 uh, as Rome fell. Because that was the beginning of the Roman Empire. It was the center of the Roman Empire. And as soon as that was destroyed, then, yeah, there are parts of the Roman Empire that are still very much alive and, and, and powerful. But what we know is the Roman Empire is gone. The Roman Empire is gone when Rome falls, in my opinion. And I don't know a lot. I'm saying this without a lot of knowledge. I'm not telling you that I'm right and you have to agree with me. I'm just telling you what my thoughts are and let me know if that's wrong or stupid or whatever. But to me, Rome stopped. The Roman Empire ceased to exist when Rome fell, in my opinion. My opinion can change, okay? Okay, uh, I'll see you guys next time, all right? Hope you're all doing well. See you guys next time. Bye.